Good evening, everyone. I, Dr. Priya Vani, on behalf of Academia IPSM, would like to welcome you all to this PG lecture series on rabies, present global perspective, and the way ahead for India on eConnect platform. As we all know, World Rabies Day is celebra celebrated on 28 September 2023. This year, the theme is Rabies All for One, One Health for All. I am feeling extremely privileged to share that today we have with us a distinguished epidemiologist, a pioneer in rabies prevention whose unwavering dedication has transformed public health outcomes in India and beyond. His groundbreaking work in the field of rabies prevention and control has not only saved countless lives, but also served as an inspiration to us all. It has to definitely be none other than Dr. M.K. Sudarshan, sir, yes. foundation, founder, president and mentor, APCRI. Heartiest welcome to you, sir, on this behalf of on the behalf of IPS ME Connect, requesting you to please share your passion with all our young PG students. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Priya Wan. Uh, I take this opportunity to thank uh, IAPSM eConnect uh, for uh, inviting me and giving this opportunity to speak on my uh, favorite uh, topic of uh, uh, rabies and all its horizons. Now, uh, as a prelude to the presentation by uh, Dr. H.S. Uh, Ravish, who was my uh, formal colleague at uh, Kempegoda Institute of Medical Sciences, a professor of community medicine. He has also done uh, quite a good amount of rabies epidemiology and uh, rabies uh, uh, vaccinology, clinical uh, trials and uh, other related uh, research work. And uh, now I will come to the topic. Uh, he and uh, see it, uh, tomorrow is the world, uh, 28th of September is World Rabies day and uh, about the theme uh, Dr. Ravish is going to speak, uh, if I am correct. Now, from my perspective, uh, I have been working on the uh, rabies prevention and control since 1986, 1986, for over 37 years now. And uh, uh, there are certain uh, things which uh, the young uh, postgraduates have to remember. Uh, uh, in the departments uh, that have anti-rabies clinics, you will have a better understanding and uh, you will be better informed about uh, rabies prophylaxis and also about uh, rabies epidemiology. But those who do not have an anti-rabies clinic that is attached to the Department of Community Medicine, please take it up with, uh, internally with your heads of the department and uh, whatever it is and uh, try to uh, establish a model anti-rabies clinics uh, in your medical college under the Department of Community Medicine. Uh, now, uh, this is a requirement uh, under NRCP, National Rabies Control Program also. So, take this uh, opportunity and uh, establish. Guidelines are available from APCRI and also from uh, NRCP. Now, uh, globally, uh, the problem is about 59,000 uh, persons uh, are estimated to die of uh, rabies. But this is a number which has stood uh, status, static for over uh, nearly uh, over a decade. Uh, one of the main reason is India has stuck to its figure of 20,000 uh, estimated human rabies deaths, which is since uh, two decades. Uh, that is since 2003. This survey was done by APCRA and my uh, leadership in 2003 and uh, the report was given and uh, subsequently uh, no study uh, was done uh, for whatever reason. Now a study is under progress under ICMR and the results are expected in a month or two and definitely we know that the number is far less and that is going to, that is because of various reasons like uh, in 2003 it was the sample vaccine or the sheep brain vaccine the uh, rabies immunoglobulins were mostly equine. HR human rabies immunoglobulin usage was very minimal or negligible. Now rabies, uh, more and more equine rabies immunoglobulins have uh, become available uh, in the market. Rabies awareness has improved and uh, rabies monoclonal antibodies, uh, two products have been produced in India. Uh, so uh, 
the uh, the rabies passive immunization the rag and uh, rmab coverage has also has improved uh, to an extent it could be somewhere around 18 to 20 percent now in upper limit now another thing uh, is uh, because of the increased awareness uh, improved uh, uh, transport and communications uh, the people are now going to the health facilities and seeking uh, vaccine but vaccine alone is not enough because in severe exposures the incubation period may be short vaccine takes about two weeks but uh, two weeks to give the pro desired protection but uh, if the incubation period is short for whatsoever reason it is the immunoglobulin that has to be injected into the wound uh, and that is going to neutralize the virus locally and uh, so this is something uh, which needs to be attended to and another important thing what we should know is uh, we speak of uh, some 29 survivors globally, uh, but uh, please remember uh, what we need is not a survival uh, in a vegetative form or with some neuro uh, debility. What we want is a recovery. A recovery, just like people recover from various other infectious diseases and they become normal and carry on with their routine work. So uh, some amount of uh, uh, serious research work is going on. Uh, to address this uh, issue of recovery from uh, rabies. Uh, and also, you see, in many places where uh, there is not much uh, information, not, not much understanding about uh, rabies and dog bite, they are often confused. See, dog bite is a condition. It has a different ICD number. Whereas rabies is, dog bite is a wound on some part of the body uh, following a, a, a dog bite. But uh, rabies is when the virus is in the central nervous system, the person develops the classical uh, signs of uh, rabies and uh, death is practically uh, inevitable. So rabies should not be uh, equated to animal bite or dog bite and confused uh, uh, with uh, uh, animal bite or dog bite. So they are totally different conditions. So when we say rabies, we, and generally, rabies management is the word that is used. Rabies management is clinical management of human rabies in the isolation facility. Whereas rabies prophylaxis is what we mean by saying when there is a dog bite, we start a rabies prophylaxis in terms of wound washing, then vaccine and immunoglobulin and counseling. So please, the postgraduates, I request, please do not mix up animal bite and rabies. They are two different ICD numbers. They are two different uh, clinical entities and they should not be uh, mixed and confused. So, and about the World Rabies Day, World Rabies Day started in uh, 2007 and 28 September, why? It is to commemorate the uh, death anniversary of uh, uh, Louis Pasteur who first uh, uh, developed the anti-rabies vaccine and also uh, was successful in getting it uh, uh, injected to a uh, dog bite victim, Joseph Meister, through, of course, Dr. Granscher. Uh, 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 Louis Pasteur was a microbiologist and a chemist. So he took the help of uh, one doctor, uh, Dr. Granscher, and he injected the uh, vaccine. And it was a live vaccine. It was a crude vaccine. But whatever it is, the, uh, the biting animal was a a confirmed rabid dog or a clinically suspect rabid dog, whatever it is, and the boy survived. So then it became history, and the Institute Pasteur was established in uh, Paris, and uh, many Institute Pasteurs have been established the world over, and we have one uh, Pasteur Institute uh, uh, in India also. Uh, the, there were two, now it is only one at Konur, uh, 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 Nilgiris, Tamil Nadu. So, uh, so since 2007, uh, World Rabies Day is being observed every year uh, to highlight uh, uh, the problem of rabies and uh, animal bites uh, and what needs to be done to prevent uh, deaths from human rabies globally. And now there is a, a very ambitious uh, uh, goal of uh, uh, zero by 30. That means by 2030, uh, uh, end of 2030, globally, there shall not be any death due to rabies following a dog bite. So uh, we are left with only 
seven years to go. And uh, let us see uh, if uh, in India, if the presently it is left to the states to uh, manage and run the show. But as long as it is not made a vertical program, that is from government of India, uh, I don't foresee any uh, tangible results and we will, be, we will be able to achieve zero by 30 in India. If India doesn't achieve zero by 30, world is not going to achieve zero by 30. So presently it is uh, left to the states to uh, manage. Uh, they have to notify the disease as a um, uh, uh, under epidemic disease act and uh, make it a notifiable disease. They have to procure the vaccine. They have to procure the immunoglobulin. Uh, and so uh, there are a lot of uh, issues uh, I am not going to dwell upon. So with this introduction, unless uh, uh, India uh, goes on a, a war footing and uh, take up actions uh, in a missionary mode, uh, we will not be able to achieve a zero by 30. Uh, I have to be very honest and I have to be frank. I have to be truthful and uh, realistic. I am not uh, sounding pessimistic. I am very realistic because I have seen over three decades how things are happening. And if we want zero by 30, we need to change the game. So with this, I have handed it over to Dr. Priyamani. And thank you very much for the opportunity. And I wish all the best to Dr. Ravish. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. We are privileged to have the opportunity to hear from you today. And I am definitely sure that your work as well as your words will definitely continue to guide and motivate our young PG students in the pursuit of a healthier and a safer world. Ahead. As we move forward in today's session, I have the I would like I would like to take upon this privilege of introducing Dr. Ravish Sir, Professor Kim's Bangalore and Mentor WHO Epidemic Intelligence Services. Sir is also the Secretary General of APCRI and has an experience in the field for over two decades. Without any further delay, over to you, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. So in today, in today's topic, I am going to tell you regarding elimination of rabies, its global perspective and way ahead for our country. All of us know that rabies is a 100% preventable disease as the appropriate post-exposure prophylaxis or pre-exposure prophylaxis are available worldwide. Therefore, with the availability of these services, timely and correct post-exposure prophylaxis for all the exposed victims will prevent rabies even after high risk exposure. That's why WHO has taken the target of global elimination of dog mediated human rabies by 2030. Coming to the burden of the problem, it is a neglected tropical zoonotic disease transmitted through the bite of rabid animal, mostly by dogs, more than 95% of it which occurs in more than 100 countries across the globe. And it is a potential threat to more than 3.3 billion people, that is half of the entire population in the world and affect mainly the underserved population. You can see these red areas are the endemic for rabies. And coming to the animals transmitting the disease across the globe, you can see here, dog is the main reservoir and the transmitting animal in our country and in most of the countries. Coming to modes of transmission, as it has already been told, it is mainly by the bites of the infected animals and mostly it is the dog, more than 95% of the times. It may also be transmitted through licks on broken skin or mucous membrane because mostly it is neglected if there is a lick on broken skin or scratches from their past because they also may contain the, contain the virus since most of the animals has got the habit of licking their past. 
and very rarely through inhalation and organ transplantation. Coming to the Indian scenario, as per the WHO APCRI survey, which was done in 2004, that is the present authenticated document till date, which was conducted by none other than Dr. Sudarshan sir, headed by him. It has shown that 17.4 million animal bites occurs every year in the country. Similarly, the IDSP data, if you take the past 10 years data, it is showing to be around 12 to 16 million exposures per year from past 10 years. And these are the places where the dog bites are reported most commonly in Gujarat, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal and other places. Coming to animal transmitting disease in our country, most frequently it is dogs, next are the cats. And many a times it may be through monkeys, horses, sheep, any domesticated animals like sheep, cows, buffaloes, donkeys, pigs and others. And occasionally through wild animals such as mongoose, jackals, fox, wolf, bear, camels and any other wild animals for that transmit. And uh, we must remember that there is no reported cases from exposure to bats, rodents, general domesticated rodents, birds and squirrels in our country. Coming to the post-exposure prophylaxis or treatment after animal bites, as it has already been told in my previous slide that India is highly endemic for rabies and has the largest number of animal bites in the world. Therefore, every animal bite, whether it is a dog, cat, domesticated animals or a wild animal, is taken or suspected to be potentially rabid and therefore post-exposure prophylaxis should be started as early as possible or immediately after the exposure. And you have to remember that PEP should be started anytime whenever the patient comes and it should not be denied to exposed person even after whatever the time interval has been elapsed. Because as sir has already told you, the incubation varies from few days to few months to few years. Therefore, you, you have to think that the virus may be there at the site of exposure. Therefore, you are supposed to start post-exposure prophylaxis immediately after whatever the time interval which has been elapsed after the exposure whenever the patient comes and reports to you. Coming to post-exposure prophylaxis per se, rabies can be effectively prevented by means of post-exposure prophylaxis by three important steps. Before going to the steps, we have to categorize the wound because the type of post-exposure prophylaxis provided depends upon this categorization. Coming to WHO categorization of animal bite wounds, it is classified into category 1, 2 and 3. Category 1 consists of touching or feeding of animals, licks on intact skin. Therefore, there is no breach. There is no chance of virus or the saliva entering the human system. Therefore, the recommended PEP is none if reliable case history is clearly and correctly available from the patient. In category 2, it is nibbling of uncovered skin or minor scratches or abrasions without any bleeding. That is considered to be a minor exposure wherein there are chances of viruses which may be deposited over the surface. Therefore, local treatment of all the wounds is necessary with soap and water followed by administration of a complete course of anti-rabies vaccination either by intramuscular route or by intradermal route. Then category 3 is the most severe exposures, very important because they are the severe exposures which may lead to the disease which includes single or multiple transdermal bites or scratches, licks on broken skin and contamination of mucous membrane with saliva. Here, since it is severe, that means any wound with even a small drop of blood is considered as category 3. And the three important steps, all the three steps are very much important and necessary for category 3 exposures whenever there is a bite wound with bleeding. 
First one is local treatment of wounds. Second one, uh, one is administration of rabies immunoglobulin or rabies monoclonal antibodies, which acts as passive immunization in and around the bite wounds, fall the wounds because virus may be present in any of the wound, and a complete course of anti-rabies vaccination, either by intramuscular route or intradermal route. Therefore, this categorization has to be remembered for correct categorization and correct post-exposure prophylaxis. And coming to the three steps of animal bite management or post-exposure prophylaxis, depending upon the categorization or the severity, which I have already told you, or the first one is wound washing with soap or detergent and water, followed by application of virucidal agents. This is to reduce the viral inoculum at the wound site. The second important step is complete course of post-exposure vaccination for all category two and three exposures, basically to introduce antibodies which prevents the risk of virus entering the peripheral nerves. And finally, it is the wound infiltration of rabies immunoglobulin or rabies monoclonal antibodies in all category three exposures to neutralize the virus at the wound site. Therefore, it is very important to provide early and complete post-exposure prophylaxis, which will prevent rabies. Coming to anti-rabies vaccination, of course, as all of you know that rabies is a vaccine preventable disease. All animal bite victims of category two and category three exposures, irrespective of their age and body weight, require the same number of injections and dose per injection because rabies vaccine comes in two doses, 0.5 ml and 1 ml. So it is a one unit which are supposed to give for each dose in intramuscular one vaccine or in intradermal route, it is 0.1 ml into two sites irrespective of the volume of the vaccine. That is the meaning of it. The minimal acceptable potency of any vaccine is 2.5 IU per intramuscular dose, whether it is intramuscular or intradermal route of vaccination. Coming to the vaccination schedule, it may be given, as I've already told you, either intramuscularly or intradermally. The intramuscular vaccination is given as per the SN regimen, that is one dose of vaccine on day zero, day three, day 7, day 14, and day 28. And vaccine has to be administered into the deltoid only, never to anterolateral, never to the thigh. In children, it can be given to anterolateral aspect of the thigh only. Coming to intradermal route, it is of four visits, two doses of 0.1 ml intradermally on both the deltoids on day 0, day 3, day 7, and day 28. Once again, it has to be given in the deltoid area, preferably. And coming to the need for passive immunization, as sir has already told, the anti-rabies vaccine stimulates production of neutralizing antibodies by the human immune system, and the protective level of antibodies are seen only after 7 to 14 days after the first dose of vaccine. Therefore, the patients who are exposed to the suspected rabid animal are vulnerable during this window period of 1 to 2 weeks, despite the timely and full course of anti-rabies vaccination. Especially when the bites are on the extremities such as head, neck, face and hands. Therefore, World Health Organization recommends the infiltration of the passive immunization, which are readily available to neutralize the virus at the site of presence, if it is there, that is in the form of rabies immunoglobulin or rabies monoclonal antibodies, in all, all animal bites with any bleeding, irrespective of the site, number or severity, which are category 3 exposures. And there are different types of rabies immunoglobulins as well as rabies monoclonal antibodies which are available in our country. That is equine rabies immunoglobulin, various brands are available and it has to be infiltrated as 40 international units per kg body weight. 
ट्यूमर रेबी इम्यूनोग्लोबल इन ट्वेंटी इंटरनेशनल यूनिट पर के जी बॉडी वेट and there are two types of rabies monoclonal antibody one is a single monoclonal antibody that is rapid shield 3.33 iu per kg body weight another is a cocktail of two monoclonal antibodies which is twin rap and it has to be infiltrated at 40 international units per kg body weight and as far as possible the entire volume of either the rig or the r map which you are infiltrating has to be infiltrated locally into all the wounds because the virus may be present at all the wounds and injecting the remaining volume of rmab or rig anywhere away from the wounds serves no purpose therefore as far as possible as per the who recommendation all the volume of required amount of rabies immunoglobulin or rabies monoclonal antibodies has to be administered into the wound only so this is regarding post exposure prophylaxis coming to pre exposure prophylaxis or we are going to provide prophylaxis before the exposure which is safe and effective method of preventing rabies mainly among high risk group in endemic regions of india these are people working in rabies diagnostics and rabies lab veterinarians and wildlife officers animal handlers dog catchers safai karmacharis and rat pickers police postal and courier personnel and door delivery services i think all of you know now no nowadays it is all delivered at the door steps like amazon swiggy zomato and others these are the people who are highly risk for the exposure to animals travelers especially to the endemic regions and mostly the children because all of you know that children are of playful nature they will play on the grounds they will play with animals without knowing the consequences of the exposure therefore irrespective of their exposure we have to provide pre exposure prophylaxis for all the children and it is also recommended as an optional vaccine by indian academy of pediatricians coming to the dose of pre exposure vaccination any modern cell culture vaccination can be used for pre exposure prophylaxis it may be given as either intramuscular route or intradermal route in intramuscular route one dose of vaccine intramuscularly intradermal route it is 0.1 ml of vaccine single site on day 0 day 7 and day 21 or 28 so three doses of vaccine has to be given for pre exposure prophylaxis the advantage of pre exposure prophylaxis is whenever if exposed later that means after pre exposure prophylaxis similarly after if there is any exposure after complete post exposure prophylaxis of five dose of vaccine only two dose of booster anti rabies vaccination is recommended on day 0 and day 3 this is re exposure whether the patient has got pre or post exposure prophylaxis any time before then after re exposure there are only two dose of anti rabies vaccination is recommended on day 0 and day 3 and there is no need for rabies immunoglobulin or rabies monoclonal antibodies since this booster will stimulate the memory cells and immediately antibodies will be produced inside the human body so this is regarding post exposure prophylaxis and pre exposure prophylaxis in detail which you are supposed to know that this is how you can give a vaccination record because once you give pre or post exposure prophylaxis the patient has to have some record since if there is any re exposure and uh, we have seen in many studies the amount of re exposure in our country is about 10 to 15% of the population therefore they should have a vaccination record in order to show that they have taken the complete course of vaccination and after re exposure they can go for only two doses of vaccine on day 0 and day 3 either intramuscularly or intradermally then after this we will come to know about managing special situation of rabies exposures 
The first and foremost question most of the times it is asked is regarding pregnancy and lactating women. We should all know that rabies vaccine is one of the most safest and most effective vaccine. And similarly, RICS and RMAPs are safe and efficacious even during pregnancy and lactating women. And the dosage and schedule remains the same. That means to say, every pregnant and lactating woman, if they are exposed to any animals, then they can easily go ahead with complete rabies immunobiologicals in the form of full course of anti-rabies vaccine and local infiltration of rigs bar r -maps. Then the second situation very commonly seen in our country is the interchangeability, whether it may be interchangeability of the type of vaccine or the route of vaccine administration because in our country, there are two routes of anti-rabies vaccination which are practiced. One is intramuscular route of vaccination by private practitioners mostly and intradermal route of vaccination by government hospitals or in the public uh, hospitals. Therefore, they can be overchanged or interchanged Therefore, in, in unavoidable circumstances, change in the route of administration or in vaccine product during a post-exposure prophylaxis or a pre-exposure prophylaxis course is also safe and immunogenic. In such vaccine cases, vaccination schedule need not be re uh, restarted and the regimen to be continued as per the new route, whether it is IM or ID. So interchangeability ideally not recommended, but in unavoidable circumstances, they can be given and completed the course. That is the main. Then the next important thing is regarding irregular vaccination. That is also very common in most of the countries, including ours. In general, you have to remember that the three dose of anti-rabies vaccination has to be administered ideally in one week. That is maximum up to seven days and four to five doses, whether it is ID or IM, because ID is four doses and IM is five doses, by four weeks. That is the mandate. So if there is any irregular vaccination, one or two days here and there, there is no need to restart the vaccination. But only thing is you should remember that you are supposed to complete all the four or five doses of vaccination either by intradermal or intramuscular route. Then the next important thing is the late reporting, as I've already told you in the beginning itself. If there is a late reporting after a few days, a few weeks, a few months, PEP should be given as rabies has a prolonged incubation period. If the patient has not taken any dose of VRV previously, even rabies immunoglobulin or rabies monoclonal antibodies, even after many weeks or many months, has to be injected to the site of bite, even though there are no bite marks seen. If the patient shows that this, the site of bite, then you can infiltrate either rabies immunoglobulin or rabies monoclonal antibodies at the site of bite. That is the main. And you are supposed to complete the entire course of vaccination, even after late reporting. Then this is one of the most important issues as far as the uh, immediate past was con considered, the anti-rabies vaccine with other vaccines like COVID vaccine, UIP vaccine and others. It has been shown that at the, if it is given at different sites, whether it is a COVID-19 vaccine or an UIP vaccine, it is safe and will not interfere with the antibody production of either the vaccines. Therefore, whether it is a UIP vaccine, which is a which is under national immunization schedule, or any other vaccine, and the COVID vaccine, if it is taken simultaneously at different sites, then it is safe and immunogenic. That is the meaning. We have a study, we have done it at KIMS, and it has been shown that giving simultaneously anti-rabies vaccine along with COVID-19 vaccine is safe and both produce required amount of immunogenicity or antibody. Then the next important thing which commonly is known as regarding the persons consuming raw milk of rabid animals. 
as per as the latest who documentation there are no documented case of transmission of rabies of drinking milk of rabid animal therefore there is no requirement of rabies pp then hiv aids with low cd4 cell count then you are supposed to do thorough wound wash plus rig or armor even in category 2 as well as of course category 3 exposures plus complete 5 dose of vaccination by intramuscular only root only and if feasible rvna that is rabies virus neutralizing antibody response should be determined 2 to 4 weeks after completion of 5 doses to assess whether additional dose of vaccine is required this is done at the WHO Collaborating Center for Research at Nimhans in the Department of Neurovirology at Bangalore. Then lastly, coming to chloroquine treatment, there is no contraindication for individuals receiving chloroquine if there is a bite because that is more important to treat animal bites. However, if possible, PEP or PERP should be completed before chloroquine is initiated. So this is all regarding the pre and post exposure prophylaxis, including managing special situation on rabies exposures. Then coming to global efforts towards elimination of the disease, that is the rabies. You know that rabies is there from many, many decades. So there are a lot of efforts from the global as well as the country which has been taken place. I'll cover only the re recent ones. In 2005, the world called for action by setting a goal of zero human deaths due to dog-mediated rabies to by 2030. It is through WHO, that is World Health Organization. OVA, it is similar to WHO, that is World Organization for Animal Health. FAO and GRC, that is Global Alliance for Rabies Control. All of them have joined together to form United Against Rabies Collaboration to achieve the global target of 0 by 30. The countries like Western Europe, Canada, Mexico, Philippines, Bhutan, Japan and Latin America have already eliminated the disease through successful One Health approach. That's why the same approach has been taken up to eliminate the rabies from the world. And basically these are the important things we are supposed to do to eliminate rabies by 30. Uh, Dr. Priyavani, are you able to hear? Yeah, I think he got disconnected. Yes, sir. So you can yes, start uh, from that slide, yeah. yeah. You can call him and ask him to reconnect. Hello, Dr. Varun Vani. Varun, yeah, sorry, yeah, I think. You are yes, connected sir. in his... Yes, sir. No, yeah. sir. I am only co I am connected and uh, Varun was also connected. He got disconnected. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, sir. You can tell. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll mute. Yeah. Can I continue? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So with the, all these interventions, you will have less expenditure on rabies, fewer rabies exposures. Uh, sorry to interrupt uh, you, sir. I think you will have to again uh, slide share the PPT. Okay, okay. Not that. Thank you. 
And sir, I would request you to start from the slide um, again, the last slide, so that okay. while I am uh, cropping up the recording, I will crop the middle part and then can upload the remaining in one flow. Okay, no problem. Yes, sir. I'll start from the global efforts. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Can I start? Yes, sir. As all of us know, the rabies is there from many, many centuries and lot of global efforts has been taken up for the prevention and control of rabies across the globe. I will focus only on the latest things because we are targeting zero human deaths due to dog mated human rabies by 2030. In 2015, the world called for action by setting a goal of zero human rabies deaths by 2030. This, is, this was a collaborative effort of World Health Organization, World Organization for Animal Health, FAO and GRC, joined together to form an United Against Rabies collaboration to achieve this global target of 2030. Many countries have already eliminated dog mutated human rabies through successful One Health approach. That's why One Health has been taken up by the entire globe in order to eliminate the rabies by 2030. So these are the main important things which you are supposed to remember to work towards rabies free by 2030. That is building operational capacity, preparedness for especially for the treatment and management and prevention, educational and advocacy programs, awareness building and commitment at all the levels for elimination of the disease. And of course, monitoring and evaluation is a must for any program to know the effectiveness of the program and sustainability has to be there with the commitment and with the resources. So these are the things which you are supposed to remember in order to work towards elimination of the disease. Therefore, if you do all these things, then there, there will be reduction in human rabies risk because of improved awareness and education, increased access to healthcare, medicines and vaccines, and through mass dog vaccination, and providing guidance and data with effective policies, guidance and governance, ensuring relevant data to enable effective decision making. And of course, multi-stakeholder has to be there and they are supposed to be engaged towards elimination of dog-mediated human rabies by 2030. Coming to our country's work towards elimination of rabies, India has great, made greatest strides towards prevention of rabies from past two decades. In 2002, that is two decades back, NCDC organized expert consultation to formulate the national guidelines for rabies prophylaxis to bring out uniformity in, in pre and post expert prophylaxis practices. And these guidelines were revised into 2007, 13 and 2019. This is the, this book shows the latest guidelines, which is easily available, freely downloadable in online in NCDC website. 2004, Government of India banned the production and use of NPV, that is nerve tissue vaccine. And one of the most prominent part for this was done by APCRI under the leadership of Dr. N.K. Sudarshan once again. And similarly, intradermal rabies vaccination was approved in 2006. In 2008, under 11th year plan, the pilot project on prevention and control of human rabies was done in five cities across the country. And with the success of that pilot project in 12th five-year plan, the government of India launched a national rabies control program, that is NRCP. The main objective of the program is to prevent and control deaths due to rabies in humans and progressively marching towards achieving the global target of rabies zero by 30. 
there were two important components under nrcp one is human component the other is animal component since it is a zoonotic disease and it has to be worked out on a one health basis under human health component training health professionals including all doctors starting from the highest level to the lowest level and also the paramedical personnel's use of intradermal rabies vaccination because it is cost effective and availability is one of the most important thing in our country strengthening the surveillance system laboratory strengthening and iec activities coming to animal components it is population survey of dogs mass dog vaccination dog population management once again surveillance there also in the animal field this is the progress which has been done after nrcp has been introduced model anti rabies clinics have been developed across the country and the rabies immunoglobulin are freely available in most of the government hospitals training modules has been developed for healthcare professionals you can see on the right hand top corner the guidelines has been received periodic revised periodically annual national world rabies day this is the 17th one which has been organized across the country billboards booklets audio and video on rabies has been developed and more recently it is national action plan for dog mediated rabies from india has been drafted and has been implemented and that's how india has made it a priority to stop this preventable disease after the beginning of national rabies control program therefore government of india determined to reach the global target of zero human deaths due to dog mediated rabies by 2030 launched the national action plan for rabies elimination that is napri on 28 september 2021 that is 2 years before on the same world rabies day and one health india action plan is a model of real leadership in india and can serve as an example for other rabies endemic countries to achieve rabies elimination by 2030 and this is the book or the module of napri once again is freely downloadable from the ncdc website and napri provides a framework and guidance documents for the states since in our country health is a state issue therefore each and every state has to develop their own action plan specific to their needs and aims at systematic reduction of rabies risk through sustained mass dog vaccination pre and post exposure prophylaxis and public education and uh, these are the stakeholders since i have already told you it is a collaborative effort of many departments mainly the animal husbandry environmental department and department of health and family welfare including ministry of drinking water and sanitation science and technology information and broadcasting ministry of finance ministry of human resource development and others NAPRI's approach for rabies elimination is based on recommendations of various internal uh, international agencies which I've already told you and is based on five major pillars one is the political will as all of us know nothing can be done without political will sustained funding is very important because it is the one which can lead to uninterrupted supply of logistic requirement whether it is a manpower or the material power or the money which has to come from the government intersectoral coordination has to be there i have already shown you in the previous slides what are the sectors which are involved in the prevention and ultimately elimination of rabies community participation is very important because without the involvement of community nothing can be done at the field level therefore community participation is of utmost importance and definitely operational research has to be take place because we have to know where is the problem and what is it going on at the operational level at or at the ground reality so as to improve the program or improve the steps of the program to attain towards our goal of 0 by 2030 so 
the vision of napri is to achieve zero human deaths due to dog mediated rabies by 2030 in the form of these three key principles which are prevention promotion and partnership that means to say introducing cost effective public health interventions in the form of provision of post exposure prophylaxis pre exposure prophylaxis health education in order to improve their health care seeking behavior and at the same uh, time we have to improve the accessibility affordability and availability of these services improve understanding of rabies through advocacy awareness education and operational research and ultimately coordinated support for the anti rabies drive from local community urban and rural civic society government private sectors and also through ngos coming to strategies of human health component of napri the first and foremost important component is to prevent rabies in animal bite victims that is very important we have to prevent that first therefore pep has to be provided for all animal bite victims irrespective of the place under universal health coverage in the entire country that means availability of anti rabies vaccine and rabies immunoglobulin or rabies monoclonal antibodies has to be there at all levels of healthcare facilities in this the government of india has started as already shown you more than 350 model anti rabies clinics has been developed for strengthening the infrastructure at all healthcare systems there were even if you can see the latest amendment of nmc under community medicine for the post graduates and the interns now i think two or three days back it has been uh, shown under the nmc guidelines that the interns and pgs has to be posted to anti rabies clinic that is the latest thing which has come up so this is the one which is required and recommended even by nmc at all the medical teaching hospitals and implementing cost effective intradermal rabies vaccine ensuring availability of trained manpower financial assistance through national free drugs initiative inclusion of anti rabies vaccine and rig bar r map in essential drug list at all levels and ensuring uninterrupted supply of anti rabies vaccine and rabies immunoglobulin or rabies monoclonal antibodies at all levels starting from the primary healthcare level up to the top level and of course ultimately there should be monitoring mechanism of all the things for reporting if there are any afis or sees if it occurs then the next important uh, component is capacity building of professionals in appropriate animal bite victims sorry animal bite management of course this is one of those things that means today say training of health professionals and paramedicals on rabies pre and post exposure prophylaxis as per national or ncdc guidelines training of state district and below district healthcare professionals on program management aspects training and capacity building of laboratory personnel and of course finally it is most important thing is joint training of health and veterinary professionals which is rarely done but it has to be done under one health approach that's why with all these things the government of india and the ncdc has developed a separate wing on one health center of one health the next one is to encourage pre exposure prophylaxis for high risk groups that means the people working in rabies diagnostics and lab, research lab which i have already shown you under pre exposure prophylaxis veterinarians and wildlife officers animal handlers and others and most importantly as i already told you promoting prep among children through involvement of indian academy of pediatricians strengthening surveillance of animal bites is also important by ensuring implementation and strengthening periodic reporting system about animal bites through idsp under ihip records and reporting formats should be available at all health facilities providing animal bite management facility the ministry of health and family welfare has issued guidelines for declaring rabies as a notifiable disease 
and it has been implemented in more than 10 states across the country. And this notification will facilitate contact tracing and prompt prophylactic measures to prevent infection in other people exposed to the same source of infection, of course. And the next one or the next important component is the strengthening diagnostic capacity. That is to identify and establish rabies referral laboratories at the national level, regional level and state level, in the state government medical colleges, infectious diseases hospitals or tertiary care hospitals. And to provide at least one lab at district for anti-rabies antibody titer estimation by ELISA method. And of course, training and capacity building of laboratory personnel. And these are the things which has to be available. These are the laboratory facilities which has to be available at all the levels. And the next component is prom promoting operational research. That is to estimate burden of animal bites. That's what which I've already told you in the beginning. The presently available authenticated data was from 2004, where WHO APCRI collaboratively under the leadership of Dr. Sudarshan, which has been done and has been shown to be 17.4 million animal bite cases. Presently, ICMR Chennai is doing this. Then we, we have to see what is the present burden. Estimations of coverage of ERV and RICS that has also been done by one more study that is the WHO APCRI study very recently in 2018. And similar studies has to be done frequently. And to study the health seeking behaviors of the community for animal exposures. Yeah. And uh, studying the operational feasibility and effectiveness for the modified regimens for post-exposure prophylaxis to prevent rabies has to be done. That means to say, presently in our country, there are five doses of intramuscular rabies vaccination regimen is recommended. But the WHO is uh, going for four doses of intramuscular rabies vaccination. So the feasibility of introducing four doses of intramuscular rabies vaccination has to be checked for its safety and effectiveness. Similarly, in our country, the intradermal regimen consists of four doses of vaccination, whereas the WHO recommends three doses of intradermal rabies vaccination. Here also, we have to check for the feasibility as well as safety and effectiveness of the intradermal rabies vaccination in our country. Presently, ICMR NIE Delhi, sorry, NIE Chennai is doing this study. Then after this, continuous monitoring of AFI and SAE is of utmost importance in almost all the places across the country. The next important component is strengthening intersectoral coordination by joint training and sensitization workshop of district level, medical or veterinary departments on rabies, joint gap analysis for formulation of action plan for rabies elimination, Framing standard guidelines and SOPs, that means the roles and responsibilities of medical and veterinary sectors, and exchange of relevant information. This is of utmost importance wherein the medical and veterinary sectors have to exchange their information in order to go for prevention and elimination of the disease. The other important component of uh, Human health is information, education, and communication. The development of IEC materials for undertaking IEC activities is very important. Framing of definitive IEC strategy or guidelines for the identified target audience, that is health professionals, veterinary professionals, community or field workers, such as ASHA, CNMs, paravets, and general community or media is of importance. Including IEC, that is especially in schools and colleges, through their Curriculum is of utmost importance because these are the children, whether it is the school or the college, they can carry the message uh, for the entire community as well as their family. Then the next important component, as we have already discussed, is regarding public-private partnership. And advocacy for the participation of private institutes 
including the medical colleges are very important. NGOs such as our group APCRI, community organization and others in the efforts towards rabies prevention. And involvement of medical colleges, as I've already told you, is of utmost importance because most of the animal exposures comes to medical colleges and we have to have a model anti-rabies clinics at all the medical colleges and across the country. And as I've already told you, yesterday or day before yesterday, even NMC has given the guidelines to post the interns as well as PGs to anti-rabies clinics. And the private practitioners and professional bodies across the country is also very important. That's why IFSM has taken up this of uh, giving uh, CME program to all the postgraduate students and the faculty members and our IAPSM and coordination and cooperation of private or community organizations and NGOs are of utmost importance. So these are the components of human part or the strategies under NAPRI. Coming to animal health components, I'll tell you briefly the headings of it. The estimation of canine population is of utmost importance. Identification of rabies risk zone in order to provide uh, the vaccination, that is a mass dog vaccination. That means planning and implementation strategic mass dog vaccination program. Assessment of post-vaccination coverage. Dog population management to promote owner responsible dog ownership. Solid waste management is also a part of animal health component. Community involvement, especially responsible dog, pet dog ownership, confinement and containment of rabid dogs, then operational research there also is important. Then that is about NAPRI. And as I've already told you, that NAPRI tells the states to develop their own action plan since it is a state subject. The SAPRI is nothing but state action plan for dog-mediated rabies elimination. So these are the important steps of therapy. That means first one is to assess the gap by each stakeholder, identification of earmarked funds by each stakeholder, identify the stakeholders involved and defined roles and responsibility, responsibilities which they are supposed to take in order to work towards rabies elimination. The next important step after these basic things are the preparation of action plan with activities to be undertaken at each level for the next seven years now. And submission of the state action plan and joint review of the action plan submitted by the state by NCDG. NCDG. And uh, NAPRI and SAPRI envisages developing a dedicated portal and GIS enabled electronic surveillance system for establishing a joint rabies surveillance network and integrated data sharing mechanism for local, state, and central agencies. This portal would provide essential information on animal rabies, human rabies, dog bites, availability of rabies vaccines, and immunoglobulins or monoclonal antibodies for states and other partner organizations on a real-time real basis. This system is very important and will provide linkages between health veterinary and wildlife sectors and acts as a one health component and thus enables systematic data sharing on agreed parameters identified in the NAPRI between these three sectors. This will also help to analyze the situation and strengthen intersectoral coordination and appropriate public health action by concerned stakeholders, whether it is health, veterinary or wildlife sectors. And uh, the next important thing which you are supposed to know is how to declare the state as rabies free area, state or the district. The first thing is make rabies notifiable in human and animals. Slowly, most of the states are doing. Reporting decrease in the number of dog rabies cases. Reporting decrease in the number of human rabies cases. And after all these things, the first step, the next important step to work towards the elimination is no case of rabies in dogs for two years and no case of human rabies through dogs for two years. If this is done, then every state can declare as rabies free. So this is in brief regarding my presentation regarding what India is doing or working towards elimination of rabies from the country.
Then lastly, coming to the World Rabies Day. This is the theme for World Rabies Day. And here all the meaning for the theme and the logo here. You can see it starts from education to vaccination to data to collaboration to diagnosis to the virus rabies. These are all included, especially under One Health. This is human health, environment, and animal health. And all of us play a role, everyone. And similarly, not only all of us, we should not keep quiet that all of us will be together. Every person, that means one person makes a difference. So every one of us should take the goal and work towards the community with One Health approach. And show that health is for everyone. So let's work together as one and make one health available to all. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for this in-depth insight into rabies. Moving ahead to the next segment, I would like to ask you a couple of questions which were put forth by our audience. Yes, ma'am. Along with that, I would like to mention that there were a lot of questions, sir, that our audience this time, there were around 40 questions, of which a lot of them were covered with by you in the presentation, as well as uh, explained very well. So, we will be taking up the questions, which I think may be less clear to the audience from the presentation. Yes, ma'am. Sir, uh, a seven-year-old female child was bitten by a street dog, category three bite, 15 days back and has not received any treatment from then. So how do we manage this case if it comes to us? Once again, I have explained in the special situations category, whatever the time which has been elapsed after the dog bites, if any person comes to the anti-rabies clinic with the dog bite, then you have to take them as a new or a fresh case and start the complete course of PEP. As sir has already told you, the incubation period of rabies varies from few days to few months to few years. So you may think that rabies virus may be present at the bite site. Therefore, you are supposed to give all the three steps. Wash thoroughly with soap and water the wound if it is there, if it is already healed. Then start with anti-rabies clinic and complete the full course. Five doses of intramuscular rabies vaccination on day 0, day 3, day 7, day 14 and day 28 in deltoid region or in 7-year-old girl also deltoid can be given or in smaller children it may be anterior lateral thigh and never to gluteal region or intradermally through four doses 0.1 ml intradermal on two sides on both the deltoids on day 0, day 3, day 7 and day 28. And infiltration of rabies immunoglobulin or rabies monoclonal antibodies into the wound if the wound is present or if the wound is healed and if the child or the parents or the guardians of the child reports that there was a small drop of blood oozing from that part or that site, then you can go ahead and infiltrate the required amount of immunoglobulins or monoclonal antibodies according to their body weight into all the wounds which they show to neutralize the virus if it is present at the site of bite. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Along with that, sir, should we administer ARV in case of any other rodent bite, sir? Presently, under uh, in the Indian circumstances, domestic rodents has not reported to transmit the rabies in our country. Then, sir, uh, should we treat repeated animal bites and again and again administer RIG and ARV? Madam, uh, once again, this also have been covered in my slides. Now, once again, I'll repeat to clarify. Once, if there is an animal bite case, and if the patient has taken complete course of post-exposure vaccination, either by intramuscular route or intradermal route, which I've already explained, or if a person has taken pre-exposure prophylaxis, either intradermally or intramuscularly on day 0, day 7, and day 21 or day 28, three doses, 
if any time later in their lifetime if they come for re exposure then there is no need for rig or rabies monoclonal antibodies only two booster dose of anti rabies vaccination either through intramuscular route or intradermal route on day 0 and day 3 is enough so there is no need for rabies immunoglobulin or rabies monoclonal antibodies and along with that there was one more question what is the least time interval up to 3 months after the complete dose of vaccination either by intramuscular or intradermal route there is a systematic review which has been done once again under the leadership of dr sudarshan that it has been shown that up to 3 months after completing the course either intradermally or intramuscularly whether it is pre pre exposure or post exposure there is no need for any post exposure prophylaxis after 3 months yes for every by two booster doses thank, thank you so much sir both the sorry dr pravish you can yes, also sir. add here uh, it is a recommendation of world health organization and government of india yes and it has any product inserts have it now uh, yes, no sir. treatment is required uh, if the exposure is within 3 months means rabies vaccine and immunoglobulin is not required so yes sir. yeah yeah that you can uh, uh, tell okay yes sir I, i shall i continue with that madam yes sir and this recommendation that means first 3 months after pre or complete pre or post exposure prophylaxis there is no need for post exposure prophylaxis after re exposure and this also has been approved and recommended by world health organization as well as ncdc government of india moon management is necessary moon, moon and of course yes sir <laughs> along with that moon management is essential with uh, running soap and water one is about uh, this uh, skin sensitivity test for uh, equine rabies immunoglobulin uh, i think because uh, many will not know this uh, dr ravish you can yes, ask the question yourself and clarify yes in sir private practice they have to do whereas in government institution uh, if there is a circular uh, uh, they can uh, uh, exempt the skin sensitivity test and straight away do wound infiltration locally that yes, is one, one more thing that you can definitely yes, add yes, uh, because it is important yeah because yes, uh, many may not know this yes, and but uh, uh, people you the post graduates they need to know uh, what uh, has to be done in the private uh, uh, clinics whether it is a gp sir. clinic or a pediatrician uh, that needs to be done with this uh, i close from my side 100% sure thank you thank you priya wani and thank you ifu sir dr ravish please here yeah. thank you sir i'll i'll give a brief one minute yes. note on that yes. sensitivity test for equine rabies immunoglobulin is the most common thing which most of the physician who treats the animal exposures is a, an issue here we have to know that as per the who guidelines there is no need for skin sensitivity test for equine rabies immunoglobulin whereas the dcgi in our country tells that the skin sensitivity test is of utmost importance and we have to do it therefore all private practitioners should follow skin sensitivity test as per the guidelines or as per the package insert in our country whereas in the government setup if the state government has notified or issued a letter that there is no need for skin sensitivity test then they can go ahead with the direct infiltration of equine rabies immunoglobulin into all the wounds where there is bleeding thank you so much sir for this detailed explanation i am definitely sure that it will that this will reiterate the knowledge in the minds of our young students who will be listening to this lecture and coming to the end of the discussion i again extend gratitude on behalf of ipsme connect to both our renowned teachers and i would like to take a moment to thank our pg coordinating team and all the office bearers for supporting us in this endeavor of pg lecture series please do subscribe to the ipsm e connect channel to stay tuned to our further events as the moderator of this session this is dr priya vani signing out thank you everyone thank you madam thank you sir thank you thank you dr priya vani